Hey everybody, it's Al with CAD Cam Wizard and today I'm going to go through some of these surfacing toolpaths. There is a request to go through them so you know let's kind of take a look uh, and I'll touch on a little bit of the linking as well. Okay so first one up is Parallel Cuts. Uh, parallel Cuts is like a Z-level finish or a planar style strategy. Okay so in this setup here we got a more like a z-level finish and in this setup it's more like a, a planar style toolpath now you're right a lot of these strategies do act very similar but I would say these first two uh, parallel cuts uh, acts most like either z-level finish or a, a planar type routine okay uh, the next one we have here is parallel and what you need to keep in mind is that a lot of times it's based on the geometry input so okay so I got parallel cuts here hold on let me go to the next one uh, the next one here is cut cuts along a curve okay so this one here uh, let's get into it so this one here cuts along a curve you can use a drive curve and drive surfaces and the tool path will be uh, perpendicular to that drive curve. So this can be very useful if you have uh, some detail and you have like a center line that you want to use to drive where the tool path is generated. Uh, you can select that center line and the tool path will be driven uh, perpendicular to that. So in this example here you can see I get kind of like a, a planar type toolpath, but what I've selected for my lead curve uh, is this bottom bottom edge here, right? And the toolpath is going to be perpendicular to that. If I remove and reselect maybe this edge here, then what we're going to see is more like a, a Z level style strategy where it's going to work its way back and forth. So you're using that lead curve in order to dictate uh, the angle of the tool path, okay? So that's a little bit about that one there. Um, the next one we have is morph between. Um, morph between is good when you have thick to thin type surfaces, so kind of like this bottle here, and we want to blend between these two areas. Uh, if we look at our input geometry, we have an upper curve right and then we have uh, a lower curve which is this other side okay now this is a, a revolved surface so maybe not the the best example for it but if this side was straight and this side was curved the tool path would morph between those two areas okay so that is definitely one of the popular strategies this next one is um called parallel this uh parallel to multiple curves. So this this image doesn't necessarily give you the best representation of it, but uh, and actually let me uh, let me set this to two directions. So we'll go two way uh, zigzag. All right. So this will help you see it a little bit better where this tool path that's being generated is parallel the the drive surface is these surfaces here. Okay, and the tool path is being generated parallel to the drive curve. So unlike the cuts along a curve, where the lead curve, the tool path is perpendicular to the lead curve, when you're in uh, parallel to multiple curves, the edge curve, as they call it here, the tool path will be parallel to that. So as this gets across the surface, you can see how the the tool path stays parallel to it. Now. It's not stepping over to the, the surface area per se, or maybe it is. Um, I don't think so though, because you can see it's thinner over here and it gets wider over there. But more importantly, you can see the angle of the tool path is parallel to that lead curve. Okay, so that's a little bit about that one. Um, the next one here is project curves. Now, project curves is, is actually a really good one there's a lot of different ways in which you can use this uh, similar to what you have in the mill pro but the difference being here uh, is you're gonna select surfaces you're not gonna necessarily select them all 
uh, and you can adjust how deep it's going to cut. You can say whether it cuts to the right, stays on center, cuts to the left, and you can add an, an additional offset. So prior to having the deburring tool path, a lot of times you would use this for a three axis edge break. Now also with project curves, there's a, a few other options in here, like a traditional radial, spiral, or offset style strategy. So these are some surface-based quality tool paths, so you're gonna get a lot more refinement than some of the standard or professional tool paths here. And then the other thing that you have here is with your projection, you have a couple of more options. Instead of just the surface normal, you can also align to X, Y, or Z, or a vector. Okay, so a very powerful tool path. And uh, they all apply to different scenarios. Now this bottle example is probably not the best to show them all, but it, it was quick to draw up. All right, now the last one I'm showing here is flow line. And I'll say flow line is definitely one of my favorite strategies. You get a really good clean tool path. The only downside to this strategy is it's really a single surface machining strategy. So like edge breaks and things like that. These, these radiuses that are on the edge here, this is a good example of where I, I would commonly use like a flow style strategy. Maybe, maybe not the bottom of a bottle, but if I select one of these, and recompute. You know, this this is going to give me very good uh, quality uh, surface along these edges. Now, maybe I don't want it to run that way. Uh, the flow line is unique, unlike the other tool paths where you use either an angle setting, like in parallel cuts, uh, uh, a curve and cuts along a curve, more between two curves. You're you're using two edge curves. Uh, parallel cuts, you're using a, a drive curve in, or, in order for it to be parallel to. Flow line, it's going to use the UV surfaces itself. So if you want to change the direction, you come in here. Uh, did I have it set to the short? Okay, so you change it from long to short or U and V, and that is going to dictate what direction it cuts in. Okay, so again, one of the nice things about this is you have your extensions and you also have your uh, lead in and lead out options. And then the other thing you have is like surface quality. You know, in these surface based strategies, you can deal with things like uh, uh, smoothing of the tool path when it, when it offsets. Um, you can also deal with your minimum maximum point density so you can get consistent points along a surface. If you've ever machined a like a lofted surface in Bobcat. In some areas, you just get really bad finishes. It has to do with the triangulation of the surface and the, the way the math is, is being generated, you're not able to control uh, the point density, so you tend to get larger or smaller gaps and that's where that, that, that really bad uh, surface finish end, ends up happening. Where with, with these surface-based strategies, you can adjust the point density so you can make them really small, um, but you can also make them consistent. So you get consistent points, and that, a lot of times that's what's going to render some of the better finishing on your parts. Okay, so that's a quick rundown of some of the strategies here. Now, there are a few more. If we get in here, we, we can see parallel to surface and more between two surfaces. These are essentially the same strategies as more between two curves and parallel to multiple curves. The only difference is using surfaces versus edge curves to define your geometry. Okay, now a, a big takeaway that we have here with surface-based machining is your surface normal. Okay. The surface normal indicates the direction of, of which side the tool path is going to be generated on. So one of the things that can happen is you can have a surface normal pointing down and one pointing up and uh, you're going to get bad results. It's going to cut on one side and then it will cut on the other side and it's just going to look horrible. So one of the things that you want to check with your selection is the surface normal and that it's pointing in the direction you want. Now. That's a quick rundown of the surfaces. Let's talk a little bit about the linking. Okay, so I'm gonna get into the parallel cuts here. Okay, and actually I'm gonna use this one, which is running this way. So we basically have like a, a planar style strategy. You know, now I've selected a single surface here. 
you know, if I want, I could add some more surfaces, okay, and I can recompute that, and you can see how it's going to cut on down the line, okay? Now, what I want to do from here is I'm, I'm going to increase the step over. Let's make it larger so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Okay, and the other thing that I want to do is I want to make it two directional. Okay, so we're going to go one way, we're going to say zigzag. So this way we can see a little bit better about what's going on. Now, again, this is the drive surface that we selected. One of the questions had to do with the, the tangent extensions, and there's really uh, two types here, so we can come into extend and trim. Okay, we have tangential extensions on the edges of the surface, and then we have uh, tangent extensions on the ends of the surface. So, you know, if we start with this, let's go with 100% uh, of the cutter. This will only let you go past, it's not going to let you trim it, okay, it's on the side extension here. So we'll go to that value, we'll go ahead and recompute. You know, in, in this case, we can see that it's extending out on this side, okay? Based on the geometry we've selected, okay, and the direction of our toolpath here, the, the ends are these on either the left or, or right side of our geometry, okay? So that means that the one above this, uh, these are considered the sides in this example. And if we go back in here, and we go to this section here, start and finish, this is gonna be like the top and bottom, okay? So that's based on the direction of cut. It's also based on uh, the tool path that we're using and how, how the software reads that tool path. So you can see how we're having this extend down further on the, what it's considering the sides. Uh, <laughs> am I saying that right? Let me see. It can extend down further on what it's considering the start and end, okay? Or, in this case, the sides would be the left and right. This is the top and bottom based on this geometry. So, we're going uh, to actually get rid of this here because one of the things that's nice about the surface-based tool paths is it always goes to the, the tangency. So, I know the ball is past the tangency on this surface, okay? You can see how the ball is past the tangency edge, okay? Um, we can extend that if we wanted, but you're gonna get a, a full cleanup there. Now, sometimes that runs into a problem when you start because you kind of start cutting a little more aggressive than you want, but uh, that's what you're looking at there. Now, uh, let's look at these moves here, right? These smaller moves here. Um, let's look at this lead-in position. You can see it's coming right down on the part. And then if we look at this one, it's coming right out of the part. So let's go ahead and adjust our lead. So we're going to come into this one. We're going to go to parameters and links. Okay. And then from here, we're going to go to default lead-in and lead-out. So I want to set the default to a vertical tangent. So we'll go vertical tangent arc. We're going to make it 50% of the cutter, and we want it to be the same for the lead in and lead out. We go ahead and choose OK, and then recompute. And what we'll see is we get, uh, I got to turn it on. Hold on, let me go back. Uh, again, that's one of the aspects of the surface based is, you know, you have all these options that you're responsible for. So just because I adjusted the lead in and lead out doesn't mean it's applied to the, the surface. In this top section here, this is where your lead in and lead out would be for your start, your first cut and your last cut, or at the beginning of the toolpath and the end of the toolpath. So by turning those on and recomputing, now we can see how it comes down and then leads up on the start. And then over here, you can see how it comes down and then leads out, okay? All right, now the next area we wanna look at is these moves as it goes back and forth and back and forth, you know, do we want to use a lead in and lead out on that as well? Okay, so if we go to our links, we have gaps along the cut and we have links between slices. So gaps is when it's connecting from one surface to another while it's at a, 
on, on a given step over. And links is when it's linking to the start of another cut. Now, because we have it moving back and, and trust me, I get confused on this as well. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, come in here to the lead in and lead out for the large gaps. And I'm gonna say use lead in and lead out. And this will kind of help us know whether we're dealing with a gap or a link pass right now. So if we set it to that, you can see that we don't get any change on it. So these, all these moves are gonna be considered links between uh, slices, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, go back to link. Let's turn this one off, don't use. Let's go turn this one on, use lead in and lead out and recompute and we don't get anything either. So why is that? Most likely it has to do with, is this considered a small gap or is this considered a large gap? Okay, so let's go back in here. Right now it's set by a percentage of the cutter. You can see it's 110%, uh, I'm sorry, a percentage of the step over, right? So what we wanna do is set this as a value and we'll say the small moves are small we're going to do the same thing with this over here okay so now when we recompute it should be a, a little more apparent that these are the large move now large moves now because we've adjusted it and we also know that it's the link between slices because it affected the toolpath all the way around now do we really want it to go up the clearance here probably not okay so let's kind of back up just a second Let's go into parameters here. Let's go to links, okay? This value here is determining what a small gap size is. And this value here is determining what a small move size is. Small gap sizes get this type of linking move. Large gap sizes gets this type of linking move. Small link link moves right gets this type of link move and large link moves gets this type of link move so you can see how this one is set to retract to clearance area okay uh, what we're going to do is set it to blended spline and my expectation is it's going to lead out and then blend its spline over and go to the next pass so let's see if that happens all right there it is okay so we get it to lead out and then it does the blended spline over and then leads back. Okay, so you can see that this is a, a smooth transition across the edges. Um, you know, again, kind of illustrating, uh, we're, we're dialing down where that strategy is and uh, some of the options there. Okay, now uh, that's all the time I have for this particular video, but I have a number of different settings and strategies to go through. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to, to give a thumbs up. You know, if you're looking for support, I am running a promo on the support page. Uh, if you go to the support, you'll see a promo code on my standard support. I got a limited time promotion that I'm running. So if you're looking for call anytime support with Al, uh, go ahead and sign up today. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thank you.